Okay, uh, so I will talk about Solidity's roadmap for 2020. Um, having said that, the Solidity project is not a project that has fixed roadmaps. Um, and uh, this is also one reason why we're having this summit here to, uh, yeah, talk about uh, future features and agree if we want to have them and how. Um, so there is one thing we uh, very much focus on, and that is that is completely set, and that is the uh, re-implementation of the code generator using our intermediate language U. We are currently, yeah, roughly at fifty percent uh, implementation of the full language features, and yeah, we'll talk more about that later. And then a second important thing is the SMT checker, so our our formal uh, verification tool. We would also like to get almost full coverage uh, of the whole language until the end of the year. Um, but yeah, for both these topics, we'll have to see how far we get. And then um, maybe more interesting for you, uh, we plan to have at least one, maybe two breaking releases with uh, new breaking features. Um, some features can, of course, also be introduced in, in non-breaking releases. And uh, yeah, I would like just like to highlight some of the breaking features that uh, I myself find interesting. And uh, for one, this is a feature that makes uh, the copying semantics more explicit and uh, also makes at least reference types immutable by default. So um, if you want to have a memory array where you can change values, then you have to specifically uh, yeah, mention that at the point of declaration. Um, there will be a discussion session on that topic on day two at uh, 7 p.m. CST. And then uh, another topic, uh, safe math by default. This is uh, arithmetic overflow checking at runtime by, yeah, introduced automatically by the compiler. Um, we were, we did not introduce that for a long time uh, for two reasons. The first is that we think that the existing optimizer has a hard time dealing with that. And the second is that it can introduce new bugs, um, but we see that everyone is just using the safe math library and because of that, we would like to have a discussion on whether we should introduce that by default or not. And that discussion will be on uh, yeah, today at uh, 3.40 p.m. Then another interesting feature is uh, call data variables. We already have the, the call data location specifier for function parameters of external functions, but uh, we there's no really big reason why uh, call data cannot be used for any other variables, so local variables uh, and uh, parameters and internal functions. And I think this could yield uh, nice performance improvements because it does not, so because when you have a, a memory variable and just use that for call data content, then you always need a, a copy to memory, which could be unnecessary. And it, in addition, it, uh, guarantees that you can modify such the content of such variables. Then another interesting topic is uh, language servers. So during the last, actually it's last weeks, few months, um, we noticed that uh, people have a hard time uh, debugging Solidity code and just in general working with, so in, uh, yeah, in general, the development process um, could be better. And because of that, we thought about implementing a language server as part of the compiler. Language server is an initiative started by Microsoft to standardize the interface between compilers and debuggers and IDEs. And as soon as you have an, a language server for a language implemented, then any IDE that also has language server support can work with that language. So this is a nice a generic way to yeah, provide access to compiler features. And the cool thing about that is 
things like go to definition are probably rather easy to implement for us. And uh, while several IDEs already might have that feature, the interesting thing about implementing it in the compiler itself is that uh, when you use the go to definition feature in the IDE, it uses exactly the same code that uh, does the um, identifier resolution during code generation. So you're 100% sure that it goes to exactly the same definition that is uh, referenced in the final code. Um, yeah, tomorrow at 4.30 PM. And then, yeah, also in the same direction, we want to improve the output of the compiler that can be used for debuggers or more general, I don't know, how would you call it, code inspection routines. Uh, this is an initiative that was started by the Truffle team last year, or maybe even two years ago. And uh, some more teams uh, joined in in the meantime. And uh, yeah, the discussion about that will be today at 8.50 PM. Um, and yeah, two things that we always do in parallel, uh, regardless of uh, specific features, is improving the new UL-based optimizer and improving the WebAssembly output. And these two are kind of interconnected. And uh, yeah, talking about Yule, uh, let's go a bit more into detail about Yule because I there are still some misconceptions around um, about Yule. Yule is a simplistic intermediate language we have been using for quite a long time, at least for parts of the compiler. Um, and the idea behind Yule is that it should be human readable and not only machine readable. And uh, we hope that we can build our Yule optimizer or currently, yeah, we hope that it has that feature uh, to be, to generate code uh, that is still readable by humans even after the optimization. Um, there will be two sessions uh, around Yule. One of them is about Yule Plus, that is an extension of Yule uh, um, developed by Nick Dodson, and that is today at uh, 10 past five. And then right after that at uh, 5.40, a discussion group about new features for Yule. And um, yeah, our hope with Yule is that it allows people to understand much more what is happening behind the scenes in the compiler, that it allows uh, to actually inspect the generated optimized Yule code that is then very, very close to EVM bytecode. And um, it allows this Yule code to be fully audited and uh, because, of, because of that, you do not have to rely on uh, yeah, a definition of the Solidity language or um, absence of bugs in the compiler. Um, yeah. Let me just quickly check the time. Okay. Um, yeah, and the, the nice thing about Yule is that uh, it has uh, very few features, but it is a structured language. So it has uh, for loops, uh, user defined functions and so on. And it is extensible and typed, which um, allows it to uh, be used for different, yeah, different purposes. Uh, for example, we're thinking about um, yeah, adding memory allocation features to the optimizer uh, that allows lifetime tracking of memory objects uh, and out of bounds access and so on. And yeah, all this will hopefully be covered in the discussion later today. Um, as far as the Yule code generation in the Solidity compiler is uh, concerned, we are pretty far ready. So 
earlier I said 50%, but uh, yeah, 50% of the features does not mean 50% of the smart contracts out there. So please try it out. Um, whether it already works for your smart contracts. And you can try it with C minus minus IR. This shows you the, um, yeah, originally generated intermediate code for the smart contract. But this is usually not something you would like to look at because um, we are writing the code generator in a highly modular way, which means we have many, many different functions for uh, each tiny functionality that, that uh, constantly call each other and uh, the optimizer it will inline all that. And most of these functions in the end just do nothing. So what you would like to look at is the output of salt C minus minus optimize minus minus IR minus optimize. Uh, this is a bit weird. The, so if you just use minus minus IR minus optimized, it will show you the intermediate code after optimization but if optimization means no optimization, so if you did not switch on the optimizer, then it will be the same as before optimization. So please always use these two flags together. And having said that, uh, Yule output from Solidity is still experimental. So we might uh, change any of these flags in the future. Uh, we might uh, introduce different built-in functions and so on. So this is still experimental while uh, Yule itself is not experimental anymore. So if you want to, um, yeah, take Yule code and use it as input, then uh, this is uh, pretty safe. I, I never say uh, it's foolproof because yeah, no software ever is, but uh, it should be pretty safe and it is being used out there already. Then uh, one last thing about the SMT checker, um, there is a, session at day two um, on 6 p.m. about, yeah, more or less formal aspects of Solidity, uh, a formal specification language. And uh, I'm not the expert on the SMT checker in the Solidity compiler, that would be Leo, but uh, he told me that, um, it can do already quite a lot. Uh, it does function abstraction, which is really nice. So it uh, does not always, so when you call a function internally, it does not always inline it, but instead it tries to infer uh, properties of the function and just use these functions. And um, I think invariants are not yet implemented, but this is something on the roadmap uh, and also one of the main topics of this uh, session on day two.